My name is Marta, and in this Red Game and Tech video, I am here with a couple of pieces for you. Still not 100% unfortunately, probably won't be for the rest of this week. I unfortunately have tonsillitis, so if I sound off, that's uh, that's why. <laughs> anyway, the show must go on, so let's move swiftly on to Samsung. Now, I've been talking a lot recently, well, I say recently, over the last few months, about DRAM and how the prices are, of course, going to increase. And one of the reasons behind this is, of course, the problems with production and lack of, avail of, of availability. However, Samsung, who are, of course, one of the largest manufacturers of DRAM and NAND flash memory, is actually going to increase their production of DRAM. They're going to expand two of their DRAM manufacturing plants in South Korea, and they're also repurposing a portion of its 2D NAND flash line in order to produce DRAM. Now, the new production line will begin its output from Q1 2018. Now, this does mean that end users such as myself and yourself, of course, can expect to actually see the effect in the second half of 2018. So we're going to see the prices not really change all that much when it comes to Samsung until at least that time. Of course, the PC market is not the only consumer of DRAM. Obviously, it's in mobiles as well. And the DRAM industry has been a lot of strains. Obviously, just Samsung doing this isn't going to fix everything by itself. But it is going to be a huge help because they are one of the biggest manufacturers. Again, it's going to take quite a while before we actually see the effects again in the second half of 2018. So do keep that in mind, but relief is coming at least from one area, which is good. So let's move on to Intel and ARM, who are cooking something that potentially could be quite tasty. Now obviously here on PC, Intel is king when it comes to everything CPU. Now obviously Ryzen has definitely changed that somewhat, but we still have many, many years of Intel basically dominating that particular field. But when it comes to mobile, they haven't really seen the same effect. Now, basically, we had an interesting reveal at ARM TechCon 2017. So, they are combining and collaborating for some 22NM and 10NM builds. And they're actually going to, that being ARM, to build IP specifically for Intel's 22NM FinFET node. Now they're going to focus on the Cortex-A55, which for those of you wondering, I know you are, is specced to run at 2.35 gigahertz and at a rather mini 4 point, sorry, 0 0.45 volts in some middle tier smartphones. Now according to Intel, so pinch of salt, all that, it will have 100 times lower leakage, 30% performance increase, and 20% die shrink in comparison to that of 28NM. However, the bigger development reveal was actually 10NM, and apparently they're actually already working on a design of a new test ship, test chip, excuse me, and is also going to feature the next-gen Cortex-A tech, and is actually going to be around before the end of this year. We do have some specs, obviously, given that it's coming out, well, fairly soon, if it's coming out before the end of this year. It's going to run at the frequency of 3.5 gigahertz and 0 0.5 volts. Now, just give you a bit of a comparison to put this in a bit of a perspective, as it were, because, you know, all these figures are great, but you kind of need of a touchstone say, oh, so it's better than this, or whatever. Now, this new chip from Intel and ARM, as I already said, is going to run at 0 0.5 volts, but it's also going to deliver 0 0.25 MW. Now, just to give you this comparison, as I already said, useful, the Snapdragon 820 runs at approximately... 2 watts, and this is a pretty big development. So, perhaps with ARM's help, Intel can finally get a stronger grip on the mobile CPU market, or perhaps not. But we're seeing some nice stuff from both the 22NM and 10NM plans 
from ARM and Intel. So definitely some interesting stuff in the pipeline here and I look forward to seeing what impact this actually has on the smartphone market, especially when of course Apple recently re revealed the A11 chip. And the A11 is quite the beast to say the least and is quite far ahead in terms of benchmarks versus its competitors and all that sort of stuff. So you know, Intel definitely have their work cut out for them. I don't know if they're aiming to take down the A11 with these chips, but they are aiming to, of course, make a bit more of a splash when it comes to mobile processors. So there you have it. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.